uh, a bunch of subjects that everybody loves, and that is the software. The industry, uh, in times past, we had one or two softwares that we used, and it seemed like that it was, uh, we had one choice, and now we have many, and on top of that, <clears throat> the softwares we use now are into 3D designing, um, and there's free ones, and there's one, some that cost a lot of money. And uh, some of them will drain your bank accounts till you have none. Um, and then you won't be able to spend any more money unless you raise your prices. But I do encourage you to raise your prices. I've done that twice or two or three times today because we are a for-profit organization, which was the original thing that I said, uh, probably start the whole conference. I do need more of your input, so go ahead and fill out these papers if you haven't. Um, I look forward to hearing what you have to say. <clears throat> Yeah, so that we can have, discuss it as a board. But with that, I have a, we have a couple people to speak with us today. We have two from uh, ODL. One is Michael Wright, and one is Lauren. Laura. 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 The, okay, there we go. <laughs> and uh, they're going to introduce their guest speaker, and uh, I won't do that. But uh, and but really, it takes some time to get to know your computer. And uh, use it as the uh, as an extension of your pliers, or whatever tools you use in the laboratory, because that's uh, our computers are no longer just to watch movies or YouTube or whatever is out there now. It they you can make money off your computer. There, it's not just to keep track of a few things. Anyway, with that, I'll turn the time over to him. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. So today's topic is going to be applying technology into your laboratory. Um, so today it's, we're going to go over just some basics as far as how we've taken technology and integrated into ODL. Um, right now, I remember we'd have conversations just years ago, you know, who was printing, who was not, you know, accepting digital scans. Um, and I feel like the world has completely changed in the past three years, uh, dramatically. Uh, everything from workforce to technology available to uh, DIY stuff that's gotten into the mix. So there's so much stuff and noise that's happening. Uh, we're just going to kind of start going over the basics, but I really want to talk about how important it is to have technology in your laboratory. Not so much because the cool phase of technology is over. Um, now it's just about having tools that can help you do your jobs better uh, and easier. So that's really what we're going to talk about today is just look at some tips and tricks, uh, tools as far as things that we're applying into the lab, um, and then we're going to get into how we take uh, uh, some real applications for the last portion of it uh, to actually do some of the automation. Okay, so why go digital? We've been talking about this for years. Why go digital? One, um, we have to make sure that as we start to uh, dive into this digital journey, we have to obviously be competitive. Uh, all doctors in this uh, in ortho have scanners, so they're sending a scan, so it's super important to be able to uh, give our doctors what they're looking for. But one of the things that we wanted to start focusing on, because uh, we've been 3D printing for a while, we've gotten into the digital portion, you know, that part of the, the honeymoon phase of digital is now over for us. So now we're looking at what can we do to help to automate processes, and really it's reduced complexity while increasing quality. That's really the main thing that we're looking to do, uh, because as we're starting to um, uh, build the organization. Uh, we're having um, people shortages, so we're looking at a more digital generation. How do we start to make process easier? And that's really where digital is going to come in to help us. Um, so, of course, it's something that we need to stay competitive with. 95% uh, of the cases that come into ODL, they're all digital cases. Uh, we get 5% plaster still, so we really don't have a choice. Um, but obviously, we encourage folks to send digital cases. It's a lot easier for us to run through workflow. But it allows us to standardize the entire, the entire process from start to finish. Standardization, process, those are key things in order to uh, run an efficient business. Um, and I just wanted just to tell a quick story <laughs> of how we actually got into it, you know, just looking at reducing complexity. Um, this must have been 15 years ago where we had a girl who was trimming digital study models in the plaster. And she was great at it. So if you guys remember that, I'm sure you all remember having to do that. Uh, you had your, your big plaster wells, you're dropping a ton of plaster in there. And all of a sudden she got sick uh, one day and she never came back. And I had a huge study model department at the time and I didn't know what to do. Uh, but I couldn't find somebody and train them fast enough to have them do digital study models. So I just said, well, let's just, let's just get rid of the department. If we're going to do it, let's get a scanner and let's start actually doing digital study models. Uh, so 
we ended up doing that. Doctors were not excited about it whatsoever because this was years and years ago, but we really didn't have a choice. I didn't know what else to do. Um, so we essentially pulled the plug on one and then plugged in another technology. Uh, but what we did is, if you guys remember, it's so easy to do a digital study model than is actually pour it. And so we reduced the complexity while uh, we, I think we maintained the quality at that point, but it was a lot easier to manage. Um, and now that's just the norm. Um, so as we start to think about this, you know, think about what can you do in your laboratory to bring technology in just to make it easier, just to make your lives easier. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So I'd like to introduce Laura here. Thank you. All right. So what is the first thing that we think about when we think about digital? Probably STL files, right, printing, 3D models. Uh, but at ODL, we wanted to look and see what else could we do throughout the lab to make our lives a little bit easier, uh, not for just ourselves, but also the doctors. So the first thing we have is order submission. Um, so we wanted to create, we did EasyRx. That's EasyRx for us. It's where the doctors send their scans in. They can attach all the cases to the patients. They have everything in one place. Uh, then we go to digital prep. So we want to make the most optimal model possible. Uh, we have instituted a lot of different things uh, to, in order to do that. It started with our clear retainers. We started blocking out all of our models digitally rather than using wax or plaster. Um, so that makes it a lot more accurate. It makes it easier for our techs. It cuts down on model prep time. Um, other than that, we also have 3D scan and 3D print. We just upgraded our scanner in 2020. Uh, we did that so that we could scan in our actual fixed lingual retainers on the models, and we could send that back to our Vivid Clear Retainer Department. They could suck down on it instead of having to actually block it out with plaster. And then we have 3D print. Obviously, we're printing our models to fabricate. Uh, fabrication. I tell my digital techs all the time it's our job to make text lives easier. And we find a lot of different ways to do that. Uh, most recently, we added tabs onto the bases of the models. Uh, a lot of times, the techs will turn the models over, you get them switched out in the, in the pans, and uh, the wrong model goes to the doctor. So we added a little tab. We can actually label that in 3D print, and they can see the bid number. They know they have the right model. Less switching around. Uh, final QC inspection. We have a final QC before anything goes out the door. The QC tech will put the appliance onto the model, and a camera will take a picture. We'll have a database of everything before it goes out. Somebody calls back, they got a fixed appliance, maybe it didn't have buckle tube. We can actually go back and look and see, did it actually have it? Maybe it did, maybe it didn't, but we can find out. Uh, delivery, we have EasyRx. It actually integrates with UPS, so we get a tracking number. A uh, doctor can look up the case. They don't have to call and say, when is it coming? They can actually see that for themselves. So what are the things that we need to do to have uh, be successful? We need communication. For us, again, that's EasyRx. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but the doctor needs to send their scans in, let us know what they need, what the patient's name. You need your 3D software to make that happen, whatever you're going to do with your models. Uh, you got to base them, print them. After you have your software, you need hardware, uh, computer. There's a couple other tools we can use to make things a little bit easier for our techs, make them more efficient. And then the most important thing is people. Uh, the right people are going to take those other three things and make you more innovative. So I'm going to let Mike talk a little bit about EasyRx. That's our communication tool for our doctors. Can I ask a question? Uh, what are you guys using for your, like, the fill in, the undercuts, and things like that, or software? We're using OrthoAnalyzer for all of that. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd have to talk about EasyRx. I'm talking about software. <laughs> I'd be hard-pressed not to. Um, so we've been obviously using it for 10 years, uh, you know, for reasons that have made our lives incredibly easy uh, from start to finish. Um, you need to have some way of managing your case flow. I don't care if you use EasyRx or some other, some other tool. As long as you have something that's getting your cases in and allowing you to digitally manage them through the operation. Uh, because what it does, it just makes it so much easier to track cases, to know where they're going, to know where they're coming from, um, and to know where they need to go. Uh, so just a quick brief on why we use EasyRx. Well, it's scanner integration. Um, that's really big for us. We don't check any other portal. Um, we don't go into like, hey, we need to go into the three-shape portal here, a portal there, uh, you know, 
DensePly portal here for, for what they have. We just go into EasyRx because of the in integrations and we're able to pull all those scans from one place. Um, if you start having multiple portals that you're going into, you're going to lose a case. Um, you're going to miss something. It's just inevitable. Uh, so we're trying to make it easy to have one place to find everything. Um, so all of our orders are in one place that we're managing. Uh, custom templates, you know, everybody has a way to be able to have a master sheet uh, of what your doctors want. Uh, it just makes it easy. Obviously, the way that EasyRx runs is all based off the prescription. That's at the center of everything. Each doctor has their own prescriptions. It's just a simple click of the button. Uh, case goes up, scans associated with it, uh, and then it's off to digital uh, for the team to download and start working on. Uh, but what it's done is created this full digital workflow. And that was really the goal from the inception of EZRX, is to really have a digital scan come in and then really work its way uh, through till the end where you can track it and you can see, see the progress. Um, and all the scans are all associated directly with a prescription. Um, lots of tools as far as clear communication. Um, right now we're trying to reduce phone calls. So we're doing a lot of texting, we're doing a lot of chatting, we do a lot of work um, inside of EZRX and outside of EZRX just to make it easier right now as far as communication goes. Uh, that's been really, um, really key in order to figure out doctor expectations and then managing uh, just managing all the issues that can come up. Um, so again, if it's not easy to act, it's something. You have to have something at least in, the, in, the, um, in your laboratory managing workflow. All right. So software, this is what we currently use. This is current state ODL. Um, it changes all the time. This is what it looked like on Wednesday when I left. It might be different on Monday when I get back. Uh, we are using, as I said, uh, ortho analyzer for model prep. That is where we base all of our models. That's where I do all of our blocking out. Uh, that's where we ditch clasping for wires. Uh, we cut slots in for expansion screws. Anything that we can do to cut down on our text time, we'll kind of add that in there. Uh, Three-shaped dental is for our scanner. Um, that's about it. The mesh mixer is actually where we kind of come up with some of the things that we add into three-shape uh, before they update and we can implement those things, these slots and the things like that. Uh, we have articulated bases that we also create in there. We have special slots uh, that the plaster can actually go into and make it easier to attach the model to the articulator. And then we have Autodesk NetFab is where we make our digital bite registration. We print those out for any articulated cases. AutoHotKey is a common theme here that we use in pretty much everything. I will kind of get into that in a little bit. Uh, for fixed digital, traditional band and laser bands, we use Mesh Mixer. Uh, Meshy is used to measure the circumference of the molars. 3D print, that used to be a lot longer list, but now we just have carbon. If you've been through four or five printers since I've been in ODL, but we settled with carbon, it's the easiest to use. It works the best for us. For aligners, we're currently using 3Shape for the virtual setup. And the other software you see there is for our ClinCheck. So we'll send a link to the doctors via EZRX where they can see the treatment plan, and they have to approve it before it goes out. So after we have our software, you need some hardware as well. These are actually all optional, uh, but if you're going to have a lot of 3D work, you have somebody doing on the computer all day, I would suggest looking into them. Uh, first, we have a space mouse that's going to be really just for moving the model around the screen. Uh, it's a little tedious to do it all day long using regular mouse. It's a lot of clicking, a lot of movement of the wrist, a lot of right clicking, center clicking. Every mouse is different. Um, so the space mouse, you can actually rotate the model around as if you're holding it. You can zoom in, you can zoom out. There's a bunch of different options. It's all customizable. Uh, so it's definitely made our lives a lot easier. Once you're used to the Space Mouse, you can upgrade to the Space Mouse Pro. That is the same exact thing. It just adds some assignable buttons. There are a lot of presets, a lot of different tools in 3D software. So it is really beneficial to have those kind of at your fingertips rather than switching your hands from your keyboard to the mouse back again. Uh, Make us about 28% more efficient. Uh, the last two are kind of personal preference. Both my techs use them. All my techs use them. The Wacom tablet is kind of like a pencil and paper for digital. It uh, connects to the computer. 
the cursor basically was where the pencil is drawing. It's all pressure sensitive. It doesn't work in every single application, but the ones that it does, it's very beneficial. And the last one is a trackball mouse. It's more for ergonomics. Uh, some of them will have also have assignable buttons. So that makes it nice to have it both on your right and your left hand. And the last thing we need is people. Because if you're doing a lot of digital work, you're probably not going to do it yourself. Um, it is the most important thing. At ODL, we like to put the right person in the right seat. And that means we will hire for digital talent over ortho. We'll train the ortho for them. Uh, we look for 3D animators and artists, graphic designers, 3D print enthusiasts, and video and film professionals. Uh, and they will take all the other tools that you give them and they will create your efficiencies because they're going to want to work with the best things. So actually, I'm going to give you an example of Daniel, who's one of my techs, and he took our auto, he auto hotkey software. He actually taught it to himself. He wanted to fix what bugged him. We talked about lean principles the other day, and he did not like having to export every single model. Um, it just, you got to click three times to do it. You got to close a window that pops up. So auto hotkey is a coding software. So he taught himself how to use it, and he made a bunch of codes for us, and he made a video about his improvements so I will share that with you. Hey, this is Daniel from the ODL digital team. And our best two second improvement is implementing auto hotkey into our workflow. It's an easy to learn scripting language that we've used to remap keys and automate simple actions. A quick overview of what it can do is remap one key to another, press multiple keys at once or in a sequence, and even perform mouse clicks at specific coordinates. All of these can be software specific as well. Here's some improvements made to Ortho Analyzer. Utilizing the mouse clicks, I've mapped these view buttons to the numpad, which eliminates a lot of mouse travel, as well as eye travel, so we can put our full focus on prepping the model. Exporting models requires you to open a menu, click the right option, and close a pop-up window once the model exports. Using a script not only speeds this up, but completely eliminates any chance of misclicking, potentially saving us even more time. Now on to Mesh Mixer. Here's my mouse, and here's the buttons I use with and without scripts running. In combination with the buttons on the Space Mouse, I've eliminated travel between the mice and the keyboard creating a much more optimized experience in the process. Here's a comparison of me ditching a molar with and without scripts. It almost cuts the time in half from around four minutes to two and a half. The great thing about this tool is that it can be easily modified to fit our needs. There are many more potential uses and improvements that can be made to it to help automate the more mundane processes in the digital room. And that is from 2018. So he's made a ton more improvements since then. Um, so we're going to look at our future plans for this year and the next couple years. Uh, we are going to have full Vivid auto automation. Vivid is our clear aligner, clear retainer line. That's going to be AI and machine learning driven. We have a full service clear aligner portal. Uh, that's where the doctor can submit cases, get their clin check, uh, communicate what changes they want. They'll even be able to make some changes themselves. Uh, we're going to have full metal printed RPEs. Uh, we have a printer upgrade going. Uh, it's on the way, I believe, uh, next week. So it's going to improve our print volume. It's going to print faster. And it's going to drastically reduce our post-processing materials. A lot less IPA being used. Uh, we're going to have auto basing and bracket removal. So the doctor is going to submit the scans. And then a new file will be created with a base already on it. So we'll be able to download and use it right away. And then we're going to implement our wire bending machine. Uh, we have a wire bending machine. There is a digital application where you can actually import the model. You can design the wire right on the dentition and essentially print it out on the machine. We'll open up for any questions.
<laughs> Actually, you got anything to do with it? <laughs> is Lance here? Oh, yeah. Where's Lance? See he here? He's, he's rounding up people. Okay, he's rounding up people for our talk. No. That's great. <laughs> uh, so we, you know, we have the wire bending machine from AOS, uh, Advanced Orthodontic Solutions. Uh, Quite a few of us have one. Um, we're looking at implementing it into the workflow. I think the hardest part about it is actually getting a process Lance that works well. Oh, there's Lance. Somebody had a question about the wire bending machine. I figured you'd be the best person to talk about it. So I'm going to have you come up here and, and you, you spend know, five minutes answering that question. You really asked the wrong person. <laughs> he just told us to ask you. No, no, oh, no. yes. <laughs> I, I, I didn't say that. No, Michael the, said that. He uses that <laughs> I just keep it every, every So I think that Tyler needs to answer this question. Every day. He does. Come on, man. You got it. <laughs> we're back. Megan, where's Megan? Well, I'm up there, just right here. So I'll, I'll just give you an idea what this is. Just real quick before uh, Tyler jumps up. Uh, a company came out with a, a way of bending 3D wire. Um, and they've been doing wire bending in many different applications. Uh, they've been able to create software to be able to take that code, bring it to a wire bending machine, and then have it actually work. Wire bending machines have been around for 30 years. This is not new technology. It's really the, the hardest part is being able to translate the code to the machine. Um, so that's really essentially how it works. But I wanted to ask you guys, just as far as implementation goes, because this has not been an easy technology to implement through the laboratory in an efficient way. Um, so if you guys have any tips and tricks and just want to talk about it just for a second, I think that'll satisfy. Tyler, you're on, you're on the spot here, brother. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'll just I'll, I'll step back here. Um, you know, honestly, the biggest mistake that we made that sadly AOS actually warned us about, and we still did it anyways, we didn't involve our technicians early enough. That's going to be your biggest um, when it comes to tips and tricks. We made that mistake, and we're still eating it right now. We have one department that loves that machine to death and can't go a day without it. And then we have one department that still hates it. Um, which department? What are you talking about? Uh, fixed, our, our fixed department, which sadly was the department I thought was going to love it, hates it. And the one that I thought would hate it loves it. So the exact opposite of what I thought. Um, Brandon. Sorry. Okay. Why? Well, I went quick. Let me get so, the mic because other people need to hear. Um, you want to go to you? I'll go up Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> so, thank you, Tyler. Or do you work, man? That's great. Everybody's involved. So, what is it that you did to involve? How did you involve? your departments, why was one successful and one not? Like, what was it involving? I mean, besides just showing them, besides, yeah. oh, oh, I think it's because he turned that on. Machine, okay. yeah. So, um, why one, one department worked and why one didn't? Um, from the very get-go in our removal department, I have to thank my lead in that department really for accepting it so readily because she was there from the very get-go and w watching how the machine worked and really learning how it worked and then helping our technician that's running the machine bend it in a way that she can use it it made a major difference from myself who yeah I, I bend the wires I know how to make it work rather than me um, teaching him how to use it and then telling my lead to just make it work having her in there training that technician on how she wants to see it bent because in the end she's the one doing majority of the work with her her uh, her department that made the biggest difference and um, and sadly with our fixed department we didn't get the we didn't push for as much um, what's the word I'm looking for he, he just wasn't as uh, excited to jump in and learn and and we didn't push for it like we should have and still to this day we're still kind of fighting him on on using those wires uh, and it's not because of the machine it's simply because we haven't spent the time getting our bending machine our bending technician and our benders talking um, because I know it can work, and honestly, I was most excited about the lingual arch, and sadly, that's the one that's not being used. <laughs> um, Change management. Yes. And to answer your question about why some people don't like it, it, it looks different. 
it doesn't look like you can tell when when one was bent by a machine and one bent by a person there is a, a legitimate difference to the to the look and honestly a lot of our <laughs> it depends uh, do you like modern or old-fashioned the, the old-fashioned way is definitely to have very smooth smooth bending and this machine doesn't bend as smooth it's it, it has the potential on bigger like on labial bows they're not as uh, how long it takes the process to bend by hand and by bend by machine? Um, so did you look in that? Because if you're good bending with the hands, you can be like the upside to three like seconds. I agree with you that some of our most experienced benders can bend faster than the than the machine and putting it on. The upside to it though is the amount of training it takes. It takes a month to have somebody like fully s up to speed on this bending machine. It takes very little training time compared to years of bending. And then even on top of that, um, the amount of time it takes to learn to fit one of those labial bows on a model is significantly less than learning how to bend a labial bow from a straight piece of wire. Because it bends, it gets you about 80% of the way there and you just have to adjust it to finish. And there's even further tips and tricks you can do to prep a model that makes it even f easier. Do the, and doctors, do the doctors like those better or do they even notice? They don't notice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, nobody's ever mentioned it. And we've even gone to make life easy on us. Uh, we use 032 wire and a majority of our doctors have, we've asked and they've straight up switched from 028 wire to 032 just to make life easy on us. There's only one doctor that said no, and, well, we still do his work, but. <laughs> <laughs> and you save your fingers from surgery. <laughs> I had to get surgery on my fingers from using them so much for wire bending. So I just want to just add a little bit to that. Remember how we were talking yesterday about overprocessing, being able to do extra things that, you know, you just, the doctors aren't going to notice. So we had a technician as we were doing it, he was actually unbending the kinks and rebending it smooth. And I'm like, what is going on here? So as you're looking at new technology, it's going to be different and that's okay. Uh, but the docs aren't gonna notice. So again, just because we've always done it a certain way doesn't mean that's how it always has to be done in the future. Um, any other questions? Okay, wonderful. So what we're gonna talk about next is actually bringing uh, some of what we're talking about here into an actual application uh, to be able to streamline the actual fixed portion of the RPs that we do. So I'd like to introduce Gabrielli from Leone here. Um, he's been a friend and a partner to ORG for a long time and he's going to start talking about uh, some new innovations coming out of Leone and software. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to give this speech with you. And uh, I know that my feeling here is that uh, there is very good atmosphere. Um, Mike told me that it's the first time that you made this, uh, let's say, Congress as an association. So um, and in Italy, in Europe, there are many there are a European association of dental technicians specialized in orthodontics, as well as at least two associations in Italy of uh, orthodontic dental technicians. And, um, and, I, and in Italy there are at least uh, probably 300 technicians. And on other basis, the the number of employees in the labs are lower than here in the United States. And, uh, and it's difficult for them to share the experience as you have done during yesterday and today. So congratulations, very, very nice, uh, I mean, attitude to share your experience. Today, I try to give you an idea about our uh, new software is the first software that we develop. And as you know, Leone is quite well known for the RPE school or school in general. 
So, so we, we made our first software for helping the technician to design and uh, produce RPEs. Hmm? But the software doesn't work. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 uh, okay. <laughs> good. Very good start. <laughs> that technology. Oh. Yeah, this should be working. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I want to move your lapel closer. Can I take your glasses yeah. off? Yeah. Get it right underneath. Oh. That should be Fine. Good. Can you hear me? Perfect. Okay. So, um, so we call it 3D Leona Designer. And... Uh, So we start in this way. No, yesterday uh, I I've seen the presentation, and there, there is possibility to design just the digital bands and then use it like a standard screw. Uh, but why we we can also go over? I mean, we can also go to a full digital workflow. Instead of having uh, like a hybrid appliance made uh, partially digital and then adapting a, a standard RP screw. And two, <coughs> I've seen some years ago published an American Journal of Orthodontics. Um, this quite interesting uh, paper about the possibility to design, to do a full digital RPE by using existing RPE screw. Hmm? And that was uh, quite interesting. And so from, from that, we, we start to think about a um, dedicated screw for the digital workflow. And as you know, there were already on the market let's say, armless screws, okay, from the tower for accident, and they basically, they are screws without the arms. They, instead of laser welding the screw, and they offer this screw especially for, to be embedded in the acrylic button, to, to do like a, a as LP type. Hmm? And then uh, we, we, we started to think about something not only without arms. And, and so we, we found something, okay? And we uh, designed a new series of cut cam screws. We, we made an application for the, for the patent worldwide. And then, w once we got the patent, we started with the production. And we, two years ago, I was in uh, Chicago, and I made a presentation about this screw at the lab day. <coughs> and after that, the COVID <laughs> started. And, and that is my. Uh, first trip in United States after the COVID, so I'm very happy to be here, finally. <laughs> and but during that the lockdown in Italy and in Europe, even here, no, we uh, continuously thought about a software dedicated to the use of this new screw. And this screw, we have two different screws. The 620, the standard, let's say, the legendary or the very well-known screw, and also this one that is the orthogonal, let's say, screw, we call 
6.30 or even, even sorry, eagle. Mm -hmm. And so in the software can be used, you can use both. Mm -hmm. And as usual, we have three different uh, expansion capacity for the 6.30. But the uniqueness is that we have not only armless, but we have a special like a um, housing, okay, for a rectangular um, connection. So in this case, it fits perfectly the slot, and then it's just a matter to place the framework, full digital design, and laser weld to keep in place because they are literally inside of the, uh, you know, design of the, bo of the bodies, okay? <clears throat> and this design is particularly interesting for hybrid, you know, or even full uh, bomb borne appliances. And this one is the classic one and came in four different sizes. So 8, 9, 11, and 13 as usual. And even in this case, we have a, a square accommodation for the, the framework. And it fits again perfectly inside of the bodies. And then it's just a matter to laser weld. <clears throat> the matching is, and the fitting is, I mean, absolutely perfect. <clears throat> but more than this, uh, this screw seems very similar to the classic screw without the arms. Okay, we have a square accommodation, but more than this, we, we um, design a, a stronger screw. Probably the stronger screws available on the market. Why? Because many doctors, many technicians ask it for a stronger screw. Especially when they use on tests, they need to be strong in order to avoid, you know, bending. I got a lot of picture, clinical picture, where our screw and even the competitor one were bent in this way because the, the, the force needed to break the mid part of the suture is very high. And they continue to open, they wanted to split out the, the, the palate. And that is, uh, so, so the screw sometimes bent, and then after that, uh, it's literally blocked. So you can go over, okay? And so we made, uh, we use a different uh, steel. Uh, we enlarge the activation holes because we need more power in the activation tool as well. And so our we will key is different from the standard one, both for the material but even for the wire size. And we made, uh, as usual, our test before to launch on the market. This is our R&D department, and, and we made a, a test in order to, to see and to check if the, which is uh, the right material, chrome cobalt, stainless steel, we use two different grades of chrome cobalt to test, and, and then we see that the standard screw was not uh, able to because our goal was to bend the framework instead of bending the screw, okay? Um, so in order to be sure that our, our screw was enough, has enough power to, 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 to work with this. So as you can see, we made this, and then we place in the, in the clasp of the, of the instrument machine, and, and we open, we open, and we kept the, the machine block in this way, and we see the force transmitted by the activation, okay? <clears throat> so, and then we, we also, at the beginning, we, we made, let's say, two half of the framework, 
and then we found that that probably can be improved. In fact, we add uh, construction bars to keep the left and right side together and in order to facilitate the the positioning of the screw and as well as the the laser welding <clears throat> and then we found out that the chrome cobalt structure was absolutely superior uh, better than steel even if you you can metal print even stainless steel but but the chrome cobalt is is better hmm? and so based on those tests so we change the inner mechanism of the screw we change the material and more than this we enlarge the hole for activation and therefore we made a different we will keep uh, stronger the, than the standard one for many reasons the material and the wire size and, and then at the end we can claim that our CAD CAM expander compared to our standard uh, RP is almost as almost the double of strength that so could be able to uh, work on four tasks and generate enough, uh, you know, um, uh, power to, to break up the, the mid pallets of suit. I have seen uh, Ted's bend with our skill. I have seen breakage in the framework, but I, I never seen uh, our skill bend. Okay? So even the framework can 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 be broken by because if if the if uh, is an adult cases it's very difficult to open. It's okay. Is is a procedure that avoid the surgical um, uh, assisted uh, RPEs RPE, but but sometimes they need to do like a. Uh, drilling in the mid pallets of suture in order uh, before to place the expander in order to try to you know uh, open you know, the mid pallets of suture in cases where they are very interdigitated okay <clears throat> so this is like a, a, a comparison a visual comparison between the standard eagle screw and the new cat cam that basically seems exactly the same. You can only uh, visually see that the is a little bigger, but the material is different and the inner mechanism as well. Uh, it's, um, it's nice uh, to, know, to mention that uh, Moon uh, Screw they use uh, like a hexagon, a branch, you know, to be activated. And they claim that this screw um, can generate up to 50 kilograms of forces, okay? And our screw with the, with the uh, let's say, a swivel key, okay, can generate over uh, 55 kilograms of force. So, and the easiness of use of a swivel key is incomparable to the use of a, a branch in, in the mount. So, but then after that, I will look at this video short clip. After that, <coughs> one of the issues we had was to work with the a softer like a tree shape. We try to, to as you can see, it's just a matter to snap on and then you can keep in this way and you can last a weld. It's, it's not really needed to print the model. 
you, if you trust in the full digital workflow, then you can also skip the, the, the model printing, okay? But usually, I know, usually all, everybody print the model and then check on the model, okay? But it's, it's not really needed. Then you laser well the, the, the skew and then you cut the connecting bar. And so the, 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 appliance, the framework is joined together, the half and the right side, by means of the screw. And we have also some uh, information for how to laser it, how to laser weld it. It's important to keep some space here. We have seen that if you go on, on the arms and this laser welding can affect the, uh, can over it the, the framework and it could be brittle, okay? So we suggest to leave at least half millimeter. But, but more than this, since, since the, uh, you know, you try to expand, so, and the arms is inside of a blind hole, so there is no, um, let's say, stress on the laser welding area, okay? In this case, even it's even better because you are in this way and you push in this way, so you have all this area that uh, transmit the force of the of the screw to the framework. <coughs> Is this a yeah. Okay. So your so. And we have in the ladder already all the STL file of our CAD CAM series expander. And we are going to the other screws soon, including the leaf uh, and the single screws. It will be also possible making uh, appliances without screws, such as, uh, let's say, lingual retainers or transparent bars. We, we wanted to, and our goal is not to sell the software. <laughs> our goal is to support you and to sell and to use our, sell our, our school. And because the, the problem we, we faced was to work with, uh, let's say, true shape automalizer. So uh, two years ago, we tried to work with them and I made a presentation with all the uh, I mean, procedure, the workflow to, to be used with three shape. But let's say, uh, for using our SKU, you should uh, say to, you should uh, import the SKU as the lower jaw model. And then you work on the upper. Bec and we ask them, please put a library of SKU, my SKU, the, the competitor SKU, and then do something for design uh, ARP or, I mean, expansion appliance. They never, never do. So it's still possible to work with the tree shape uh, and um, we are available to, to give to anybody our STL file to be used with any software. But then we, we recognize the need of um, offer also uh, our proprietary software. So during the lockdown, actually, we, we decided to, we were forced in off, at the office, so we started to think what we can do, and we decided to do our first software for designing, and that is the software, okay? The good is that you can download and you can uh, download the uh, free trial version for uh, four weeks. It's just a matter to go uh, to our website 
and this is a small video, clip video that show the feature of this uh, software <coughs> that again I think it is the first and once you upload the 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 model doesn't matter if it came from lab scanner or intra or one then it's a matter to decide which size of the screw and then with with painting literally painting the bands and the the support you can obtain this you can also generate automatically the the arms and the screw came already with the connection in in the body so there is no need to to to, to align the the connection with the body so once you attach the line to the little purple part that's the slot where the where the bar is going to go that, that's automatic the yeah so the screw has already the connection inside exactly fit that fit exactly the the, the square slot right. <clears throat> and then at the end it's just a matter of, and you can also sorry you can also put like a label on the connection connection bars with the name of the doctor or the file name or um, at the beginning, we, we gave this uh, better version of our software to some important labs in, in, in the world, okay? And, uh, and we got some uh, suggestion. One of them was to, to put a label that came from Great Lakes, to be honest, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, and everyone, so I can can have the, the the free version of the our software windows only um, n n we will have also the i have actually i have one installed in my mac hmm? that was a question yeah thank you thank you, thank you. yeah no but the funny thing is the <laughs> software house our software house they uh, do the job on a Mac and then transform in a Windows. No, because they know that the majority of the people use Windows. So you ask them, okay, but for the Mac user, okay, that is even easier because they they program they, they do the program on on, on the Mac. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you. So when you say this is not working, I'm not sure. Is it? When you say you're willing to software companies is that because you want other software companies to incorporate this into their software no 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 the the 3d soft the stl file of other screw are available all oh, the, the screw okay yeah. okay STL so file. because if you want it if if you have a, a good software you are already uh having your computer you are familiar with no problem right so as long as the software can design the metal work the screws available to incorporate with your software. Yes. <clears throat> and there are on our website many uh, video tutorials. So it's it's not really needed to 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 be trained. You you just download, start to play with it, and see the the tutorial is is like a, there are seven different uh, station let's say so number one you import upload the upper jaw and then you position the screw and then you select the arms yes is and that is important as well uh, any doctor can download like a viewer and you can share with with your customer before to 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 print the metal framework your project. So you can send to them; they can see in case they can accept your design, or they can 
um, send back um, like a, in there is like a, a chat so you can they can write okay I want a additional look I want to change the size of the the screw I want to I don't know I mean put I go put more measurely I don't know I mean and that is a way to 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 have the uh, formal acceptance by the doctor I think so, some some lab asked for this and and we, we made it <clears throat> again you can have 30 days uh, free trial license or you can buy for 300 euros that I don't know exactly in US dollar but it's something close to I don't know maybe someone can check now <laughs> okay it's it's I'm sure that it's below 1000 okay <laughs> no it's about 350 I don't know buy the software you own it? Uh, yes. It's, for it is, it's for one year and it includes all the new version, the new update. And what about support? Uh, support, uh, if you write, okay, you can have, um, like, if you have a problem, you can write to us and we, and we will uh, organize. Right. Uh, we have, uh, probably now we have, uh, Around 300 software already started in in majority in Europe, in East Europe, and uh, someone in uh, in South America. So if your software allows to do all the metal work, drawing. Yeah, I show you now. Now I show you. Basically, from here, then you design, and then at the end you export the STL file and you send to the usually uh, to, to a um, you are outsource so you send to yeah let's say partners is one of the uh, the partner sorry <laughs> to be considered because uh, he has two very nice uh, printer metal printer made in Italy <laughs> as well so <laughs> the file you know, speak the same language. <laughs> so, <laughs> so could be, and <clears throat> and since this morning, Phil has made uh, along with Megan a very nice presentation about a uh, 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 mini implant assisted uh, rapid span soon. Okay, so. And in this case, we have also the possibility to detect where is the the the, the, the task, especially when they place the task and then they scan the position, and the you can import the the model with the scan body, and the, the software automatically detect where is the head of the implant, and then therefore you can design easily. And the, the room actually goes on top of the of the mini implant automatically, okay. So the hybrid as well as the four full ball more. Random. So the mid, the middle model on the left. Could you do an additional set of tads to the distal of that screw? You mean uh, the number five tads or? Middle model. Ah, this one. Yes. Could you do four tabs? Like, like this. But with the arms going to the molars. Ah, yes. You yeah, yes. You can add arms. You can add hooks. It's just the official in the in the that was made automatically because it detects where is the the task and the, and then you go the, the, the place the ring and and the arms. Then if you want to add some other arms, you can do. You could add more rings too, just uh, or you would do the bottom one and add the arms. Mm. 
use the bottom module at the arms? Yes. Okay. So you can, like, like in this case, this came from a, a doctor who is our advisor. So he made this, and the technician has made the, the appliance with the, our software, and then that is after the treatment. So again, is there are seven steps. When you have completed the first, then you go to the second, and, and so So it's, it's easy. And I want to just give you just a, a quick idea of this is the, the way to import the, the scan. You upload this, and then after that, I'm sorry. You just double click in the middle and uh, and you obtain exactly the symmetry of the model. And now is the time to decide which CAD CAM screw has to be selected. And it places it automatically in the, let's say, right position in the middle. But obviously, you can, if you see the change of color, that means that you are too close to the, to the soft tissue. But if you want, you can force. You can say, OK, I'm, I'm aware of this. I, I, I want to very close. This morning, <coughs> Megan has showed to us that sometimes he greened out the, the guy that paints. OK? So in this case, if you want to do this, you have to, to go red. Okay, <laughs> no green. Hmm? And then now is the time to paint, let's say, the, the band. And you can <coughs> decide the thickness, you can decide the, uh, you know, gap between the metal frame and, and the teeth as well. You can de decide if you want to, like, uh, uh, something that is very close to the teeth and on the lingual side, or you can also decide to have a, like a wire, okay? Wire. Or, or even in this way, you can decide, yeah, as, as you, 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 you have done with, with your pliers. So can you make it like traditional round wire? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that would probably work better for hygiene issues, because a lot of people uh, are concerned. Who knows? Hygiene there, issues. Yeah, yeah, but uh, on the other hand, you have a better, uh, I mean, uh, stability, uh, okay? Stability, right. Now, what are the chances the food can get in there if you don't bond all the way across that bar? Sorry? So, you see the whole red part, right? Yeah. Behind it, if you don't bond behind it, you just bond the six. You can, you can, you, you can just... Uh, I mean, not bonded, but then you get food in there, right? Sorry. <laughs> so here, let me explain. So let's say oh, we bond this. Okay. And maybe here, no bond in here. Oh, okay. Then you get leakage in here, right? Yes, but then you should uh, add. You you do this, then you do this, and then you do like a connection between the. the with a wire. No, no, I mean when you bond, mm. if this is open, there's no material in there, then food can get in there. You don't, you don't have to design that big. If you want to design a, okay, what's, his question is, can you place a wire on yeah. the lingo of it by yeah. Yeah. Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So if you do this design, what do you do here? Do you put composite material in Yeah, yeah, you put you composite. To seal this from any Yes, 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 yes. Okay, yes. Okay, that was my question. And then, so again, at the step five, 
then is the time to design the arms and it's just a matter to click on the f metal frame and, uh, and the software automatically design the arms. Then you can adjust, you can see if it's too close to the, to the gun or not. <clears throat> but again, the, the screw has already the, the connection part inside. And this is in real time. Eh? So <laughs> that is the, the time needed to design a... <clears throat> and now if you want to, let's say, add something, is the time to, to do like uh, some, if you wanted some hook or something more, you can, you can do. But more than this, it's important to have the connecting bar for the production. Hmm? Sorry? I show you, because I have another tutorial for, just for this. <clears throat> <clears throat> and we have a default, uh, you know, thickness gap and radius for, but you can change those parameters, okay, according to your experience or in, in certain cases, Jai. You mean that if you want to do just the band? Yes. Or are you locked in to pick an end? To be honest, as possible, but our goal was to support the LPs with our skill. So, <laughs> now we all want the software. okay. But I know that there is ways to design all the expander and then to cut out the arms for the expander as well. Hmm? <laughs> no, it's, it's, a, it's a good question because you are not the first, okay, that ask it for this. Um, we will see because we want to introduce also the TPB and TPB is without the screw. Also made, not yet, but but we will add also a special lingual retainer to be designed with our software. So in a very near future, I hope in Miami, in, uh, at the American Orthodontic Association meeting, we will have the new version with all the new features. Hmm. <clears throat> and again, <clears throat> that is the time to that is finished is the time to, you can export both the STL, now is, the t look, you can write, you can type in the name of uh, your doctor or the number of the, your production file, I don't know. So this is the STL file that goes to, let's say, partner, okay? Or, and you can save also the project to be sent to the, to the doctor and the doctor can open with the viewer to be validated. And this is the possibility to look, lens. So you can add arms. And you you can yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's a bar. Yeah. And there was like like a, add a, a segment like a add something a look and then you can. You can also decide the size of the arms. You can reduce or you can have, a, in, this, in this case I think it's a, 
as a default is uh, one millimeter. But then you can have bigger or even smaller. And even the PC requirement is not very high. It's, it's something that can be used with almost any contemporary computer, OK? Thickness of that bar, you can make any thickness. You can change. The, as a default is one millimeter, and then for the threads, that is so important, especially in Europe. Eh? I, I was surprised that even here, uh, it's becoming popular. But in Europe, there are many doctors who use the, at least the hybrid design like this. Many, many, maybe too many. I, I, I mean, it. Hmm? They, they use sometimes it makes dentition make no sense to me. No. Uh, anyhow, it's like, a, and so we have a, something that we um, add to the uh, standard feature of our software. And but before this, I wanted to underline that we are going to uh, organize a pre Congress course in um, in Miami, uh, and Professor Williams of PSM and Dr. Perinetti, uh, sponsored by Leone, they are going to talk about TEDs, and especially Giuseppe is going to t to talk about our RPEs along with the PSM TEDs. Uh, the, the, it will be a nice course. I'm, so if you have any uh, doctor interest, you can, I, I have some information for you. You can, anyhow, this is what to, you can do with, uh, again, if the doctor sent to you like a, a a scan with the with the scan body. It's just a matter to double click on the scan body head, and the and and the software immediately recognize the presence of the TEDs. And then after that, again, it's just a matter to now you decide which is the uh, expander. And in my opinion, the 630 is the best for this kind of application. And look, OK, now is the time to paint the, the band. We go, we go in this way. And after that, now, how thick is that on the closer? Uh, you, Look, the ring go immediately on the head of the test, and you have already designed the anterior arms. And then it's just a matter to design the posterior, and it's done. I think that the beauty of this software is that we design just for do this. <laughs> then maybe in the future we, we will do also other Appliances. Just to do RPs. So it's not available like for lingual holding arches or. Uh, maybe in the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can You can see. You can change the density of the model. You can see the the dots through throughout this, and then again is the time to export as STL file. But in case that you receive just uh, the um, scan without the, the scan body, you can import a double scan. You can uh, detect the, the, the position of the TED and place the ring on top manually. There are so many ways to, to work with the software.
emphasis with four tasks, full born born. And again, it's just a matter to recognize for him to recognize where is the task and to double click on top of the um, scan body this way. And in this case, it's even easier because it's just a matter to place the, the screw and then to the software automatically design the arms and the ring on top of the, of the four tabs. You have decided the position of the screw and just it. And again, since our screw is so strong, we got some complaint about breakage of the framework. That is not really our fault. But anyhow, we, we found out that sometimes the chrome cobalt alloy, uh, there are at least two different grades of chrome cobalt alloy. Some, some is more hard, but also brittle. Other composition is more flexible. It's difficult to say which one is the best. But especially with the full bomb bomb RPEs, the stress is very high. So our screw is very strong. The TED sometimes bend as well or move inside of the bone as well. It's also a matter of the length or as Phil this morning has shown to us, it's also a matter of bicortical anchorage, okay? But that is not our business, I mean, okay? So what we can do, we can allow the user of our software to enlarge the, the, the harms in order to have more, you know, strength on the framework as well. Yeah, but then you could have a stress uh, close to the screw as well. And now we are thinking about enlarging the slot in our screw in order to have even bigger arms. Right, because the slot is small. You increase the screw, you're not really gaining anything. No, 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 no. Keeping the, 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 the size of the screw, but just uh, enlarging a little bit the, the, the slot. Yeah. Not doing anything because the arm yeah. reduced. But, uh, and there is also the possibility to export the, 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 the model with the hole for putting the analog inside. And then, in case, you can adjust the, the framework by hand, or you can even make no sense to me, but made the manually. Okay, okay, but it's up to you. <laughs> you do all digital and then you, at the end you burn the wire, but anyway. <clears throat> so coming soon, we will have also the single arm. And as you can see, we can design with this wire frame or in this way. Hmm? Now, the single arm, will that be available in click? No, because uh, we, we don't believe in click. <laughs> we don't see any, because if you place the click as a mechanism that enlarges the uh, dimension of the, of the screw overall. And we don't want, we don't want to, to do this, and we don't see a, a, the need to have something that avoids slippers back, to be honest. Ah, okay. It's just in that area. Mm. And um, in another area, the same type of patients, I'm having that trouble too. Mm. I don't know what it is, but they, they're reverses. And would be also available 
skill for the lower jaw. So again, this way, and even the leaf will be on, on the library, so you can select the the leaf in case. The leaf also comes like this with a slot in it. Yeah. And this is the first example of we we design with our let's say better version. Another idea that we we got is the possibility to have on the library buckle tubes to be placed on the band. We we. Honestly speaking, we try also to have this uh, fused on the band and and sent to to the metal printer, but the precision inside was no not enough. So we decide to have uh, our buckle tubes and positioning here, and then you have like a, a inset where you can place and laser weld the insert it into the inset and then weld it. Weld it. Yeah, you can probably even spot welded because the thickness will be less in that area but the best is laser welding okay so in this so way that's slot, right? yeah that's cool so <coughs> will that fit any attachment or it has to be a specific attachment uh, we design for our back and tube but more or less the basis is the same i have to say i mean <clears throat> and we design only for single rectangular tube with a hook. We don't see any, maybe in the future if the, the demand will arise, we can also add a double or round tube. We will see. <clears throat> and since we, we design a special scan body that uh, is not available here in the United States, so, uh, and we have an agreement with PSM, we will be the uh, PSM distributor here in the United States. So our software recognizes if the scan came from, a, um, you know, a um, scan body of Leone or scan body of PSM automatically. So it doesn't matter if it came, if th the scan was taken in Europe or United States is the same. And I know that you, some of you told me, okay, I agree with you, but for me, my problem is to convince the doctor to use this technology. So we should underline the advantage of this technology. And this is a paper written by, by two uh, orthodontists in Italy. And, um, and they made like a, a comparison between the two methods, okay? The analog and the, and the CAD CAM, let's say, digital. Uh, important, and you can have this, I mean, I can, we will put probably in the uh, org website to be downloaded, okay? And Again, the advantages is the possibility to validate the project before the production. Less child time, at least one visit less, okay? No need to place elastic separator, that is very important. Higher passing comfort, because you know, that, that is something that you know, and less unwanted the attachment, therefore better safety. Makes sense. For the technician, reducing construction time, better precision, less technical skill. You know what? When, when we, we designed this software, we sent to very high skilled people, um, lab people in the world. And, and I was, uh, one of the comments was in Italy. Uh, that guy told me, okay, but that is too easy, too easy. I spend years of my life to, to 
learn how to work with the tree shape and other softer and now you do a, a softer that basically put me at the same level of, of anybody and that was for me okay that's that was our goal, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> okay? User-friendly. <laughs> User-friendly. Okay. Okay, disadvantages for the clinician, highest cost. But they have to understand, they pay more, but they will save time and will have all those advantages. But we have to, to train them. That is probably is also a... Um, our, our responsibility to, 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 to make training. And for the technician purchase the software, okay. Um, how many dollars? Uh, 331. Okay, so. And learning curve to work with the software, that is, is true, but you have a lot of tools on our website, a lot of clip, it's not so. There are many, some of you that you already work with, I think Laura, okay, so you can be our testimonial. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's easy, no, it's not so, okay. Oh, some picture I'm finished, I fin almost finished, so just some picture of our um, Leone story, okay. So the company was uh, founded in 1936, so many years ago. So some historical picture. Hmm? And that is what we are. We are close to 200 employees. And I've been working with Leone since uh, 1986, so it's already 35 years that I'm involved in uh, orthodontics and I still like my job. So, <laughs> not bad. <laughs> and this is the, we have three different buildings. This is the biggest one. Then we have uh, also dental office in front of our factory where we do some research on, on pets. And the majority are our colleagues. So we do something <laughs> on our friends. And uh, this is a, a building where we, we, we do like uh, services for the lab mainly. So we do, we print models, we, we do the metal sintering, we, we explain the software. So services to the labs in Italy and Europe. No US service here? Sorry? US service. Uh, we are thinking about this. So thank you, grazie, and see you in Florence. If you have the chance to, to visit Italy, please stop in Florence. That is a beautiful city, okay? And uh, in case you can also visit our factory and you can stay with us for a while, okay? Thank you so much. <clears throat>